Now the recording, the recording is on. So we should start from the beginning. <coughs> okay, so uh, I was saying that in uh, section two, we already stated how to convert between the three types of measurements, which are the count. If we have number of particles or atoms, we can go back to the moles using the fact that uh, uh, every one mole or any one mole of any substance will contain a gathers number of particles. We also can use the mass to convert between mass and moles by using the fact that one mole is, or the molar mass is the mass of one mole. So one mole over the molar mass or molar mass of one mole, we can go back and forth. Regarding the volume, we stated that it is only special case for gases, first of all, it's not for solids or liquids. And also it is for, uh, you know, under standard temperature and pressure. If the temperature or pressure have been changed, then that is not valid anymore. Any one mole will occupy the same volume regardless of the type of gas, and that is 22.4 liters. So one over 2.24, or 22.4 divided by one mole can be used to convert between the moles. That's what we did in the up to section two. Now, if I do this, whether it moves. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> regarding the, uh, the uh, objectives that we have for today, we need to uh, calculate the percent composition. The percent composition can be calculated by two ways, which we will uh, first of all use the percent composition, explain what does that mean, and then use the mass of the material and the molar mass. And also we can use the formula, uh, the chemical formula to, concentrate, to calculate the, uh, the percent composition. Now the second objective will be, and that is the most important one, I guess, is to after understanding the first one, is how to calculate what is known as the empirical formula, which is usually determined from the percent composition. And uh, once we learn this, then we have to uh, learn how to distinguish between what we call empirical formula and molecular formula. For example, uh, if you consider uh, H2O as usual, this is your molecular formula. Now, the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio between the atoms. And that is the lowest in this case. You cannot go and have one hydrogen with half an atom of uh, oxygen. So in this case, both this is, uh, uh, it is an empirical uh, formula and also it is a, a molecular formula at the same time. So it is possible uh, that the, uh, the empirical formula and the molecular formula to become the same. But in some other compounds, Let's take, for example, uh, propane, which is C3H, in this case, 8, right? So that is also maybe, well, let's consider another one, which is C4H10. Uh, that will make it easier. Okay, so this is not the lowest whole ratio number between them. The empirical form in this case will be C2H5, because that is the lowest. So this is a molecular form and that is an empirical form. We need to learn how to calculate this one and to see the relationship between the two and how we go from the empirical into the molecular using the, the percent composition, which is the percentage of each element in the composition of the compound. When you have a compound like this one, remember that this is uh, the molar mass is what? For water, it is 18 grams per mole, right? So the 18 is actually coming from 16 of the oxygen, and we have two times the uh, one, which is the hydrogen, right? So the total is 18 in this case. If we want to find the percent composition of water, we have to find the percentage of hydrogen, which is in this case is going to be two grams by 18 grams times 100%, right? And if you, that money. Yeah, we, we, are, we are working on it. Just, just hold on one second. Okay. Uh, okay. I have another topic. Okay. Uh, can you give us, I think? Yeah, I will. I will see. All right. So I was trying to mute it. But what do you want me to do? To hold. To 
Okay, so uh, that's what uh, this guy was discussing. But anyway, let's move on. All right, so how we calculate the percent composition? Let, let me just give you another example, although I was talking about the water, which is 2 over 18, that is for hydrogen, 16 over 18 is for oxygen. But that's the definition of that. It's the relative amount out of 100%. Like, for example, if you want to do the percent composition of the students in this room, right? We have two elements, the male and female. How many females do we have? Five. And two, that's a total of seven. So what is the percent composition of the boys? It is two over seven times 100. For the females, whatever that percentage is, you can either do five over seven, or you can subtract whatever from 100, because the total has to be 100, right? Are you sure? I'm just trying to make sure that you understand. Okay, that's a, a good example for potassium chromate, for example. These have been already calculated for you, but the good part is if you add those up, they have to come to 100%. Okay, so if you find two, then the, the third one, either you do it the regular way, which is dividing the uh, molar mass of the element divided by the molar mass of the compound, or you subtract it from the 100. Yeah. And if you add those up, that's going to be what, uh, 67.1, right? So the rest is 32.9, and that is, it will make it up to 100. This is a good example. And we may have another one, which is potassium dichromate, for example, where we have K2Cr207. Also, the, you can see that the chromium percentage has changed from this one to that. So that's the meaning of percent composition to start with. Uh, how to uh, calculate that? This is the way to do it. If we have the masses of the element and the compound, that is the first method. Now, the one I told you about already, which is the second method, we're going to come to that. But the first method is we provide you with the mass of the element and the mass of the compound, uh, or the elements in this case, if we have more than one element, and then we have the uh, mass of the compound, we divide this by that and do the percent composition. Let's take some, you want to say something? Okay, okay. okay. here's an example. Like for, when we have a sample from a compound that is 13.6 uh, grams, that's what we have. And uh, um, a full analysis, they found that this compound is made from magnesium and from oxygen. Okay. That is no. And then when they determined the oxygen, they found it to be 5.4 grams. So the question, what is the percent composition of the compound? In other words, you need to find the percent composition of oxygen and that of magnesium. Yes. As usual, with any uh, problem like this, what we do? We analyze. We yes. determine yes. the knowns and the unknowns and how to go from this to that, right? So here we have uh, the mass of the, uh, this is the mass of the compound. Okay, this is the mass of oxygen. We need to find the mass of magnesium. What do you think the mass of magnesium will be? The difference between these two. 13.6 minus 5.4, that will give you the magnesium. Once I have the magnesium, and let's call it X, for example, then the percent composition of magnesium is equal to X divided by 13.6 times 100. Right? For oxygen, it is 5.4 divided by 13.6 times 100, and that's it. Either you can do this, or after you get that for magnesium, or you get that for oxygen, you subtract it from 100. It is the same thing. Okay? So that's just basic math now, what we're doing. It's no big deal, but you need to understand the concept, how to find the percent composition of a compound if you were provided with the mass of the compound and some of the elements, not necessarily to be all of them, as in this case. So here he found the, uh, that of magnesium, and here we are required to find the others. We use the same thing, mass of the magnesium, divided by the mass of the compound times 100%. That would give you 60.3. So the oxygen in this case should be 39.7, right? Which is the difference between 100 and 60.3. If you do 
do that mathematically also you're going to find well 39.7 sometimes if you find something like this that's fine because uh, you know it's not accurate 100 percent because when you determine the uh, elements when they found that the oxygen is 5.4 this is experimentally determined so there must be some errors here and there okay the guys are working on it good so yeah so then the total is 100 that's fine or as a matter of fact it is uh, 39.7 yeah right two records are the same there all right the second procedure which is how to calculate the percent composition from the chemical form that's already explained to you with the water example and potassium guys you need to divide the individual molar mass of the element which you can get from the periodic table First of all, you find the molar mass. Let's say I give again H2O, I find the molar mass. What is the molar mass? It is 18 grams per mole, right? Then I find the molar masses. Well, when you find this, you already added those. So you have them already. So the percent composition of H of hydrogen is equal to two grams over 18 grams times 100%. And for that of oxygen, it is 16 divided by 18 uh, plus. Okay, so the, the new formula is uh, the percent mass of an element is equal to the mass of the element in one mole of a compound, and that is the molar mass of the element, divided by the molar mass of the compound. So this is the second method. I think he is going to give you an example, which is uh, if we consider uh, this one, which is C3H8, that is chlorine, and he's asked you to do the percent composition. What is the first step? We find what is the molar mass. Right. The molar mass in this case is going to be uh, <coughs> three moles of carbon times 12 grams per one mole, right? Which is 36 grams of carbon. And for the hydrogen, we have eight moles of uh, hydrogen times one gram per one mole of hydrogen. And that is eight grams. So if you add those together, that is going to be 40. Huh? 44. 44 grams. So the percent of of, uh, of hydrogen in this case is equal to what? 8 divided by 44 times 100. And that is going to be some number. And then uh, that number, wherever it is, let's say it is X, then the percent of uh, carbon in this case is equal to 100 minus X which is this one. Or, if you don't want to do it this way, it is, uh, what is it, 36 divided by 44 times 100. Right? So the answer is going to be 88.8 uh, .8 and 81. Uh, this is Hector's uh, data. Okay, so this is the answer. Is uh, in this case, the carbon is 81. And for that of hydrogen, of course, it has to be around 80. That's what I refer to be accurate in that. As long as the total is around 100, even if it is 99.8, that is fine. Okay, so we have two methods to uh, calculate the uh, percent composition. Either if we have the masses of the element and the mass of a compound, or if we have the uh, uh, chemical formula, then you can do that. All right. All right. The uh, we can also use that uh, whatever we calculated as a conversion factor. For example, uh, I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say again uh, for uh, for the water uh, as an example. Or well, let's take our example here. We have C3H8. We have for just rounding purposes. Let's make it 18 and 82. Okay. So uh, we have the hydrogen as 18 uh, percent and we have the carbon as 82 percent okay let's say for some reason somebody finds a sample of methane regardless of how much is that mass uh, propane i'm sorry and he said that if we have 10 grams of uh, methane uh, eight, what, how much uh, hydrogen it contains in grams. So what you need to do is to use this conversion factor because here 
this is 18 by 100, right? That is a conversion factor. So you can use that conversion factor to multiply times 10. So it will be uh, 10 grams, that's the given amount. Remember the given amount times the conversion factor, which is 18 by 100. Uh, 100. And in that case, it's going to be 1.8 grams. So that 10 grams, the reason I chose 10 grams for easy calculation, right? but it could be some other number. That's why it became 1.8. 1.8 and the 8.2 grams are going to be carbon. Let's take his example, which is, I think, in the field he used also, that will make it a little bit more confusing because he used also a sample with 82 grams. I can put the term, which 82 is this and which 82 is that. Anyways, these are the conversion factors that we are referring to. These are coming from the percent composition. So what I'm trying to say is that using the percent composition as a conversion factor, we can determine how much any element is found in any sample of that specific compound. Here's the example, which is uh, calculate the masses, the mass of carbon, the mass of hydrogen in 82 grams. So if we have a sample of 82 grams, then for the hydrogen, which one we're going to use? The green or the red? The green. the green, because that is the percentage of the, or the conversion factor for hydrogen. So we multiply this by 82. That will give some number here. And we also multiply this by 82. The number here and the number there should add up to? No, 82. 82. But this is for carbon, and that is for. So we have used the percent composition. Sometimes the percent composition will provide it to you, and it will give you a certain weight of a compound and ask you how much is the uh, each uh, element. Okay, so let me just show you the number. Here, the uh, from the grams of this into grams of carbon and grams of this into grams of hydrogen. That's what we did. So we use this conversion factor for carbon and that is 67.1 out of the 82. And for the hydrogen is going to be 15. If you add the 67, it's going to be roughly around 82. Is that clear? At least for you, but yes. Which one? This one? Okay, now, that's fine. I just gave you the hydrogen, the water. I can give you any hundred example. But let me just confirm again. Do you understand the percent composition? When we say the percent composition of this compound is, let's say, 30% uh, X. Let's say I will give you uh, any other example. Okay? Let's say, uh, uh, I mean, uh, unreal example. All right? So let's say we have x2, uh, y6. That's just a compound that we have. All right? And I'm telling you that the percent composition of this compound is 30% x and 70% uh, uh, y. From that, you can extract from this percentage and from this percentage, you can extract a conversion factor, which is per 100 grams of this, we have 30 grams. 30 grams of X is found in 100 grams of X to Y6. Is that right? And from this one, you can do the same thing, which is I have 70 grams of Y that is found in 100 grams of X uh, to Y6. These are the convergent factors that you have extracted from, from the percent composition, right? Now, the question comes after that is, if I have a sample of 17 grams of this compound, how much X in there and how much Y is in there? So I need to multiply the 17 by this much. That will give you how much X, and you multiply that by uh, the second conversion factor that will give you the y. Or you can do that x and you subtract the answer from 17. The rest is going to be uh, the y. 
हर ब्रेन सिक्सटीन आदमी है प्रदेश में कोई सिक्सटीन पर ब्रेन आदमी है हाँ हम लोग जब इन गिवन हैं मां सिक्सटीन पर ब्रेन आदमी या दोनों लाय बना हाँ लोग सिक्स पर सिक्स बेग आस अतरत इनक ऐ कुल में दोस्त है ओके ये हर जो आई है ना वो प्रॉब्लम All right, that is how it makes sense. Uh, what data can you use to calculate the percent composition? I want to I want First? Okay. I want. I thought it was using the chemical formula with the molar masses. This is one method. Or you have the masses, the actual masses. But then I don't know. That's the masses. One method is know the mass of the compound and the masses of the elements containing that compound. The historical order, so that is eighteen point six two five. Or if you know the chemical formula of the compound, then you need to know the molar masses. Yes, you get it correctly. Now we get to the empirical formula. To any empirical formula, it is the lowest. Whole number ratio of atoms in any compound. Yeah, and a full ratio that you can put together. Okay. In this case, empirical formula may or may not is going to be the same as the molecular formula. They're more different. In water, for example, both the empirical and the molecular formula are the same. Right? Because you cannot go below that. That's what it means when you say the lowest whole number uh, ratio. Uh, empirical formula, for example, for if you consider uh, Michel um, uh, H2O, let's consider the peroxide, you know, H2O2. That's the alcohol peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. This is the molecular form. What will be the lowest whole number ratio for this compound? HO. Even HO is empirical formula for this compound, and this is a molecular form. هاي العلاقة ما بين المoleculaر والريشيو بكون one to one طيب. This is a good example of the styrene. هذا الستيرين نستخدمه في الشخص ولا طريق. استيرفون في المول هو الستيرين. أو الأسيت ال 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 إيثان اللي هو سي تو إتش تو. طب what is the empirical form of this one? C H. بقول هذا. The lowest. It's the same. How does he act? How does he act? How does that's what I'm trying to show you here. That sometimes you have two compounds with the same empirical formula, but how they will become different by the molecular formula. The molecular formula makes the difference. And an empirical formula, not a compound that is just like this is that thing. I'm just telling you the observation. That's the shot. All right. So this is the difference between uh, the two. Right. How to use the percent composition to calculate the empirical form? The one that I the percent composition, thirty percent, seventy percent, and that's two and y, blah blah blah. And you want to find what is the, uh, uh, the empirical form. There are several steps that you have to follow. First of all, you convert the percent composition into grams. If you have. يعني لما بقول مثلا الكومباوند هذا تبعنا صاحبنا X2Y6 كان في 30% X and 70% Y. How can I convert this into gram? I assume that I have a sample of 100 grams. صح؟ And in that case X الموجود عندي بيساوي 30 grams في نفس البرسنتج. And y is equal to 70 grams. Min has sample half, right? This is the first step. The second step is to convert these grams into moles. Kim min hawil al mass min moles? See to the sayara hai. Shan fi ha wahad al mass to moles and moles to mass. What do we use? We use the molar mass, right? Even I need to know the molar mass of this one. If I know the molar mass of that one, but the how will pull high the grams into moles. So in the moles x, we have the moles y. High second step. 
ثيرد ستيب اي ويل ديفايد بوث باي ذا لوس يعني نفرض انه انه هذا انه هذا الموز كانت مثلا 0.6 وهذه كانت 0.3 Then which is the lowest? Hi. Divide both of them by 0.3. Shall we draw one? Two. This is the ratio in your empirical model. Right. Okay. Sometimes, you can draw this two point five. What do you do? I draw two point five. No. What you will do is you need to multiply both of them by two. I shall say a whole number. And the ratios has to be. Remember that when I define it, I said it is the lowest whole number ratio. Maybe not so But if if it is 2.5, then I have to multiply this by 2. معناها x راح يكون 5. هذا راح يصير 2. معناها formula in this case مش هاي طبعا. راح يكون x5 y2. هذه this is your empirical formula for this compound. طبعا مش صحيح. Convert the percent composition to grams, change it into moles, divided by the lowest, and that is going to be your empirical formula. Shall I show an example? Okay. A compound is analyzed, واحد عمل analysis, and they found that it contains 25.9 nitrogen, فيها 74 oxygen. What is the empirical formula for this compound? What is the first step? We change those into grams. يعني أنا عندي 25.9 grams nitrogen. صح؟ وعندي 74.1 grams oxygen. Is it oxygen? Oxygen. The second step is I will change this into this now. <laughs> we change this into moles. How we do that? We divide by, or we multiply by, the conversion factor. Where is the conversion factor? The green and can hold as that we have. One mole over the molar mass, or the molar mass over the one mole, regardless whether element or compound. But, I bring the grams and the mass for me. I need to multiply it by one mole of nitrogen divided by the molar mass of nitrogen which is 14 grams per mole the heat needed in the periodic table so if you do this what is the answer for this one what is the answer for this one what is the answer for this one 25.9 divided by 14 and the same time you can do this which is One mole over sixteen. So I will become seventy-four over sixteen. Huh? Which way? How will one become? It's like that. This is seventy-four point one divided by sixteen. Four point six. خلاص تكسر 4.6 طيب what we need to do we need to divide by the lowest اللي هو هذا هذا معروف divided by 0.64 بيطلع لنا واحد خلصنا منه هذا 4.6 divided by 16 0 لو تحلل 4.6 divided by 0.6 7 مش معقول أنا شو الرقم عندي؟ أنا مش عارف إني أحل غلط. 1.85 هو إيش هذه؟ مش عارف كيف منين جبت لنا إياها هذه 0.6 وصلت لك. خربطت في الأكس وسماء واحدة. طيب 25.9 divided by 14 is 1.85. هيا. إحنا وصلنا فيه كيف الكالكيولر؟ ها؟ 14 منين جبت 14؟ إيه؟ أوكي. بس انت عارف ان المولر ماس تبعت الناتجين يلا ماشي ما ما عليك هاي 4.6 صح ضبطت معي when you divide them by 2 هلا صاروا هيك وهيك بس ما بينفع you have to divide by the lowest by the lowest this is one mole هاي 2.5 
okay, then my empirical form is going to be N1 of 2.5. Is that right? Not the same. 2.5 max. So how do we have a plane? Or a multiple of plane should it say? N2 O5. This is the empirical formula for this compound. And it happens to be the molecular form. But some of the is the Okay? This is the way, this is the only example that is available here for this. But I can assure you, 100 percent within the past. In the next exam, a question like this will be there. Full sentiment each other. But what does that mean? You need to master this procedure. How to calculate the, the empirical formula using that. Okay? Huh? Should go look for my why 14 and 16. That's a good question. Well, I hate a Yeah, no. And then I should close it. This 14 and 16. The molar mass of nitrogen, uh, no, uh, is 14 grams per mole. It means from the periodic table. The 16 divided the oxygen. And why we multiply by two? We multiply by two, yeah, because we cannot have true tarif in empirical form. It is the lowest whole number. That's the whole number. It cannot be 2.5. That's why we need to multiply by two. Is that okay, Anura? 20 page 14 and 16. And for Hannah? Okay, good. Uh, I have to stop here. 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 I have to you understand this better, okay? But let me tell you, عشان تفهم اللي ضل, it is better for you to review this before you come to the next step. إذا ما رجعت هاي بتكون صعب يعني. الحين ضل عندنا مشكلة الاتنس. How we do that? اليوم أنا كنت أفكر إنه to write your names ولا لا تقولهم اليوم أو to call names. Calling names is gonna take forever. إحنا اليوم ما عندنا وقت. فاليوم سمح حظ. Everybody is allowed. Okay. اللي ها يعني صدق. All right. So that's it. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again. I hope that you keep coming again. معانا لغاية يعني بالنسبة للبويز عندنا واحد اثنين ممكن واحد اثنين ثلاثة واحد اثنين لغاية تسعة عشرة بويز لو أجوا ما في مشكلة وأنتوا البنات لو أجوا كمان خمسة زيكم أو كم يعني مكسنا عشرين اثنين وعشرين is fine okay يلا خلينا أخلص هذه بس